So it turns out I, we were joking around. I whipped the pot at him, so he thought it would be funny to throw the couch out the window. Hello, Christopher. I do the intro. Okay. Welcome. Okay. I'm not, I'm not used to other someone else running the show. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know you're usually in charge, but tonight I'm in charge. Welcome. To another episode of the podcast, I'm your host, Crystal, joined by none other than Sacco, can't pronounce his last name, Decker D, 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 D. D, Sacco D, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you for having me, Christopher. Thank you, not a lot of people know it's Christopher, but Christo is here, we're it's on quite a, site. Quite a stretch, Chris, to Christopher. I know, I know, Anthony having name troubles, anyways, long story short, uh, we're inside Ultraviolet, very, very profound nightclub on Queen Street, Sacco's uh, uh, nightclub. Uh, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Why don't you uh, tell us briefly about this place? Briefly, this place used to be. Well, there's no real brief way. I, everything I say as we're a gonna long cut story. half of the shit you say out anyway. Well, one of the first places I start opened was the restaurant downstairs, the Good Son. Good Son, shout out Good Son. Shout out Good Son. Pizza's coming on its way. Uh, at the same time, we had the opportunity to do a lounge upstairs, a lounge bar, party bar, whatever you want to call it. Wayward, it evolved into something bigger. It was around for five years. During COVID, we decided we needed to uh, a facelift, and we did something significantly more than a facelift. And uh, Ultraviolet was born. Ultraviolet was born. Do you recall? This is we're getting totally off topic. But when Alec and I took all the pictures off the wall that one night at Wayward, yeah, we were standing over there yeah. in that corner. I kind of remember <laughs> it. I mean, Alec's been doing that forever. Yeah. he still tries to do that some nights. He thinks that he's still in Wayward, but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Lily's around, so shout out Lily. We love you. Uh, biological brother. That's what they say. Tony. I mean, nine years apart. You never know. Silva, we love you. Tony, Anything you. is possible, but is possible. um, they say. I mean, looks definitely not the same. Brains definitely not the same. <laughs> so I'm not really sure about just the similarities. Him in the gutter, eh? I'm right. no. I'm just being being honest. The truth. Looks not the same. Looks better. Looks worse. I don't think I need to answer that. It's a real for sure. Um, <laughs> um, take me back to, obviously, you've been in the business a long, long time. That's how I really got to know you. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you used to be a promoter? I was, yeah. I started many, many years ago. Uh, was in school, university, getting ready for law school. Uh, you were an actor as well. We'll get to that in a bit. Did a little bit of acting yeah. on the side. We'll, so We'll cut that video in, yeah. So I went to a party in Richmond Hill at a place called Rocky Mountain High. You wouldn't remember it. It's, I'm young. You're young. <laughs> Most people wouldn't remember it. Anyways, I'm there. I'm hanging out. This guy takes me there. I, I'm in university at this, point, at this point. And I watch a guy slap this other kid out. And I was like, interesting. End up being my best friend. Oleg. The, guy, the guy that slapped or the guy that got slapped? The slapper. The slapper. The slapper. Shout out Oleg, slapper. the slapper. Okay. Um, we stayed in touch. We were both in school together. He was throwing parties at the time. He was throwing the biggest all ages parties in the city. Like without a doubt, like lo hundreds of people lined up. This is all like real estate. Oleg. Oh, real estate. Oleg. Yeah. So back yeah, then he was the, the man, Kaboda. the man. Okay. So he would throw these parties. I mean, obviously I was too old to go to those parties, but he was making a killing and he started getting into the over 19 parties. If you want to call them, you know? And, um, so he asked me one day, do you want to throw a party? And I said, no, not really. I mean, I never really liked the promoter thing. It was, don't want to be the guy that always calls, harasses, hey, come to my party, yeah, this, that, yeah. and the next. You were a promoter at the time though? No. No, you were just partier? No, he's just like, look, people seem to like you for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, so we gave it a shot. Eventually he convinced me, let's throw it. We did the math. Oh my God, we're going to be so rich. We're going to throw this party. <laughs> we're going to make so much money. Yeah. And we lost a ton of money. Uh, wow, the first, the party. first party. First party lost money. It was a club oh. called Sugar. Sugar. It, even it was exist called anymore. Sugar. It was called Sugar. Uh, like <laughs> yeah, Rich, that Richmond sucked. and <laughs> John. Because Richmond used to be, before King West, Richmond was the spot. entertainment district, okay. right? Every club was there. Like yep. some legendary clubs, money. Uh, that was my favorite back, you know. Fluid, these are like some legendary classic places that'll never be replicated. Okay. So, anyways, long story long, uh, we did a party, it flopped. Did a second party, 
same place, flop, third party flop. Anyways, we just weren't making money because the deal that we negotiated was terrible. We didn't realize, we thought we were, we were doing amazing, but the deal we negotiated in hindsight was ridiculous. And the, the owner even felt bad for us at one point. He started like just giving us money just because he saw that we were working so hard. We were bringing people just, you know. The numbers were at the beginning Because we were taking the door cover charge and obviously we're not making our friends pay. Yeah. We're inviting them out. So it felt bad, right? So we're paying the DJ, we're paying for the fly, we're paying the blah, blah, blah. So eventually an opportunity came at another club. We ended up moving our party a couple hundred bucks each. And then it just evolved, evolved, evolved. One party, another party. And at one point we were doing like five, six parties a week. As promoters. As promoters. Saturday nights, we were so busy that we were doing two two venues. I would go to one, he would go to the other. Wow. And then at that point I was like, forget about law school. I'm making more money than a lawyer. Wow. <laughs> Shout out Clarida. We'll get to you soon. It was before Clarida. Before <laughs> Clarida. Pre Clarida, yeah. When did you know or when did you decide that it's my time to? Well, I think as I was getting older, ultimately I felt like, you know, I needed to move on. I always had a little bit of an entrepreneurial mentality. So Armenian, it's in our blood, Lebanese, Armenian. Born in Lebanon. Know, born in Lebanon. We'll get to that, but born in Lebanon. There's a connection always. So there's that entrepreneurial, you know. It's in your blood. It's in your blood. Fire, you could say. So I needed to make a call, right? You need to make that decision. You're at that crossroads. Okay, am I going to be promoting for the rest of my life? And it just so happened I was promoting here at a club called Nude. This was Nude. This was Nude. So the owner, who's now my partner, Darren. Uh, great guy, Darren. The great guy. Great guy. And he said, hey, there's this place. You guys want to check it out? And the promoter world was kind of fading in the sense that, you know, the big groups, because we used to have at one point, it was myself and Oleg, obviously, as the principals. And we had, I don't know, 12 people working with us, for us, part of our team, however way you want to call it. Uh, you know, we, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't like before when you walk in, it wasn't like, it's not like it is now, excuse me. So you go into a club and you have 10 people promoting and each one bringing 10 people, you know. We would take the night and we would fill the club. The club would have zero people. We'd take, come in, take it over, fill the whole club. Okay. I mean, so so that's how we could justify and warrant getting paid what we did, right? So anyways, eventually social media came in. This is pre-social media. Yeah. You We're know, talking like year. What year? We're talking I about. don't even know. For long time ago. Early 2000s kind of thing? Pre-social media. It was MySpace and Facebook. You know, like... Uh, it's been in the game for a while, guys. That's, yeah. that's what he said. So, say. anyways, we ended up... Uh, we ended up checking out a spot. Didn't like it. We spoke. Hey, what about nude? You know, it's time for a reno. Maybe, yeah, maybe blah, 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 blah. We opened up Wayward and Goodson. And then so the rest is history. I mean, I did. I did have a club before that. I was partnering in a club called Cobra, Cobra on King West. Yes, remember Cobra. Yeah, so that we opened that club. So that was kind of like my first foray into ownership. But I wasn't really actively involved. It was more like a promotional partner. Um, so didn't really make many decisions other than you know minor things. Just made me feel like I was involved, but really, I didn't do. So Wayward was the first. Yeah. Well, just so happened at the same time we were looking at a place which was called Sea Lounge, which became Addison's. And then we ended up doing Addison's and EFS at the same oh, time. Oh, all with that kind of... Yeah. Right? And you had you had partners in all those. You brought in partners. You It was a group. There's always yeah. a different group. We, yeah. we put together a team. And uh, Addison's was my favorite. Like, yeah. You oh. know, like, it's different, right? Like, there's never any... The freaking, summer, they're all favorites, but... In the summer at Addison's? Yeah, nothing, nothing. Beats. nothing. It's all impossible to replicate just because yeah. you don't have that kind of real estate to be able to have... You know, that full patio in the back. You have that whole vibe in the, in front. And it was, you know. It felt like you were at a house party. It felt like you were at someone's yeah, house. Yeah, it was nice. It was clean. Like, was you didn't great. really, like, um, you know, it was just enjoyable. It was very enjoyable. It was very enjoyable. And when you're making money, it's even more enjoyable. <laughs> honesty is the best policy, always. Let's have a shot because the best conversations always come after right, a shot. So a shot. thank you for supplying the 1942 dinner. Cheers. Love you. Cheers. I said this on previous podcasts uh, with I've done restaurants and clubs or whatever, but what's the hardest thing? Because I asked you just before we started restaurants or, or nightclubs, what's harder to run? You told me yes and no, some reason. Well, some... yeah, I mean, they're both hard in their own way, right? There's a there's more restaurants in the world than any other business, right? right. I mean, like it because everyone just thinks they can do it. Yeah. So they open up. But it's also the restaurants and hotels are the businesses that all unfortunately have the highest level of failure 
right? So restaurants are challenging because there's so many more components, right? There's a food side of it where you're worried about, how, you know, the food going bad and ultimately you have to replace it. Food costs are high. Labor costs are high, especially nowadays. The margins are super thin in restaurants. Yep. Uh, so that part of that is the extreme challenge, whereas in clubs and bars, you don't have that component. But if you don't have the, you know, marketing is always hands down the most important factor in any business, obviously, whether it be a podcast, prostitution, whatever the case may be. We don't condone <laughs> yeah. prostitution. I just want to say that it's a podcast. You, if you did. We're good Arabic families. You know, if we did, But yes. everything is, mar religion is, mar everything is marketing, right? Like at the end of the day. Shout so, out Jesus. Shout out Mom. JC. JC, we love you all. So, so going back to clubs and bars, I mean, it's more challenging because there is this very niche world that you really have to understand, you know, how do I get that place busy? How do I stay ahead? How do I be the cool place? Right. I mean, you don't always have to be the cool place. Not every place that's successful is the cool place. Right. You know, there's a million places that have made a fortune out of being just an average Joe Schmo place that people go to, but there's still a technique to making it busy. Okay. Right. So that's the challenge there. So, you know, they're both difficult. I wouldn't say one is more difficult than the other, but I think the restaurant side of it, if you have the food figured out, I think it's perhaps easier to stumble upon success. Whereas clubs, bars, you're really not as easy to stumble upon that success. If that makes any sense. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. I'll tell you this. The, the reason, the way I know that you're successful, if you ever walk down King Street, Queen Street, whatever, with this guy, I've done it many times. It's arguably the most annoying thing in the world <laughs> because you get stopped. He gets stopped. And as his friend or as his whatever, you, you, know, you have to stop with him. It's a respect thing. And the people that know this guy and the people that he knows and the people that say hi, you cannot walk down any semi-famous street in Toronto and not get stopped with this guy. He, he really, his success is a testament to him as a person. So, you know, I know you, you know that and you're just being nice. Sometimes, it's, you know, I don't want to stop for this guy, whatever. I'm not going to name names, but. Stop and chat. Stop and chats are tough. It's They're a tough sometimes. Walk King. We're trying to get to a place 500 meters away. it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable. It's enjoyable. It's enjoyable, but we're trying to go get, you know, absolutely, excuse me, language like, fucked up. And, you know, you get stopped X amount of times on the street, but that's a testament to him as a promoter, which is where he started, and as a club owner. But still so. a promoter, always a promoter at heart, right? Because, yeah. like I said, let's not bring up the P word again, but, you know, in any situation, you're always still going to be promoting. You're Don't always going to be promoting. From. Don't forget where you came from. Yeah, so, you, you know, but in many cases, I, I sincerely enjoy the, the conversation. Not in some cases, some not cases, in every yeah. case. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know... You have to be, I mean, it's just me. It's just my personality. It's how yes. it was. I was like that in high school. I was, yeah. you know, on student council. Student. <laughs> We're going to fact check student council. We're going to fact check that. I was fact that. check that. <laughs> Vice president of student Vice council. Of student I actually did it as a joke. My friend was like, hey, you can do it. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll try it out. Uh, no, you're, you're personal. And then they changed all the rules because of me. You're... Because I did nothing for student council. And it was, I just treated it as like, I wanted to be like popularity contest. Yeah, yeah, which you are. You, you've done an amazing I didn't want to do job. president because that would actually require no, work. No, you, know, yeah, you don't have to so do So vice work. president was nice. He didn't have to yeah. do anything. Just, all right, cool. I'm the VP. That's amazing. Shout out um, Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> with um, where you are now in the business, let's talk about the, the industry. The industry. Right? Because obviously COVID changed a ton of things. Um, you know, it's a lot different now than it used to be. You said that, but where it is now, what do you think about the club and the restaurant, the hospitality industry in Toronto, uh, as you see it now? Is it on the upward trajectory? Is it coasting? Yeah, I think Toronto itself, you know, you're talking about the third largest city in North America. Unfortunately, the policymakers make things very challenging here. A lot of red tape. You know, we're talking like, you know, massive metropolitan city, but, you know, I feel like it's being run by... You know, unfortunately, it's people that don't... So they're starting to do things. There's a group, there's the Nighttime Economy Organization they're, the City of Toronto is putting together to be able to, you know, kind of get our voices heard. Because really, like, imagine, like, people are making decisions on our businesses, on hospitality, nightlife, that have no experience. They never even go out. You know, it, it, it's like having someone create a tequila but never tasting alcohol. Does that make sense? I nope. mean, it doesn't, right? So 
So these are challenges that we're always faced with, but you know, hopefully that'll change. I don't think so. I think unfortunately, without getting too much into politics, the way we're we're established right now, it's it's it's, it's going to be tough to 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 change. Obviously, you're doing you're doing it successfully. Like but I have issues sometimes, and I'll speak to residents and specifics like, if you can. Well, some some I can, some I can't. Yeah. But you know, the, the well, residents you get are canceled like here, you know, the crazy part is you know there's residents at King Street, King, Queen Street that are living here, and they're like. Oh, you know, the venues, the hospital, and not just my place, just in general, in general, right? Like they're talking about how hospitality and nightlife and restaurants and bars generate too much chaos, too much volume, too much noise. But you moved here. You moved to King Street. You moved to Queen Street. Yeah. What were you expecting? Right. You know, like. Facts. You know, I, I, and look, obviously I have a family. I have parents. I have grandparents. I have kids. Like if I always try to put myself in the other person's shoes, naturally I don't want to, you know, I, I want everyone to live comfortably and enjoy their lives, right? But at the same time, you have to be cognizant of where you're moving, what you're doing, right? Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, you just move here, and you're like, oh, yeah, I wanted peace and quiet. Well, you moved into here right. knowing. Right, the heart And the, of the reason city. you moved here was because it's the vibrant neighborhood that made it attractive for you to move here. So you're moving here for it, but once you're here, you're like, eh, I Can't don't be want a hypocrite. anymore. Can't be it's a very hypocritical. Very, very hypocritical. hypocritical. I feel you there. I mean, I'm... I'm more on the side of let's have fun, let's all party. Yeah, I'm, I'm in that stage of life. But um, let's go into more specifically our times. Cause we've our had times. Lot, we've had some times. We've had a lot of good times together. And yep. even though I don't want to say we're phasing out because you're my idol. I look at you and I say, man, he's still doing it. You have a, a liver and a kidney and a heart that- I uh, was blessed by Tony. Tony, shout out Tony. We love you. Abu Sako, we love you. You're a special man. You created a special human. But- I mean, I remember meeting you. I think the first time I ever met you was at the TFC game. And I didn't know you at this point. Adonis kind of knew you. Shout out Adonis, episode four. Great episode. Watch it. <laughs> Watch it if you haven't watched it, the uncut version. I'm trying clip. to remember this day. I remember because it was the first time I kind of formally met you. And uh, obviously, big TFC fan. Shout out TFC. Shout out TFC. Uh, just starting this season. Yeah. Uh, lots of ties. Allergy to wins, but lots of ties. We're a tie team, but we'll get there. We'll get there. The final that we won, we celebrated at? Celebrated at EFS. At EFS. That was a great segue into our EFS days. That was a great, great, great weekend. It was a great, it was a great weekend. It was a great time. And, you know, listen, we're not there. It's not the Premier League. It's not, but it felt, it felt good. Shout out Josie. <laughs> Massive shout out to Josie. Listen, I don't know if Josie knows who I am or not, and hopefully he watches this. But every time I see him, he acts like my best friend. And that's why I love a guy like that. He brought like, me on the on the bus with on, him. On, and you... The trophy, the the parade. Right, right. So that was a crazy experience. The I nicest mean, guy in the world. Never be able to replicate that experience. Of that course, was that was But when the confetti started, confetti started raining down that night at EFS, I think it was the day of probably, or the, maybe the day I went. It's the night of, the night the of. The night of, the night of at EFS. And you know, all I do is win, win, win. That was, that was a great time. EFS, arguably, I mean, I my favorite times, my best times in my history. The concept of EFS was that before? What was it? What was it before? Dolce. Dolce. So I was promoting there. You were promoting there. Yeah. And then the opportunity obviously came to. Yeah. You. So Dolce EFS. I mean, there was a, there was a change in terms of the decor, but you know, like the location was great. The oh. location. I mean, look at the end of the day, nothing beats King Street in terms of sheer was it volume like of people. Was it always like that? Well, no. Side? I mean, like I said, there was Richmond, and then it became. I mean, you still have to have the product. You still have to have the product, and the product but comes down to a lot of shitty know, places on King Street. A lot of shitty places, but yeah. it comes down to. Obviously, the guys want to see the girls. The girls want to see the guys with money. Um, just makes the world go around. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, like, that's just what it is, and that keeps us in business. And, you know, there's a lot of things that change. Uh, but, you know, I, I think hospitality in some ways is recession-proof because whether you're happy, you go out to drink. If you're sad, you go out to drink. <laughs> uh, you know, you go to We're restaurants. Happy drunks. You got to go to restaurants because you, you need to eat. Yeah. Like, you know, obviously, like, you know, the, the the amount of money you spend might change, but that those businesses will, and they've been around forever, right? Like alcohol's been around forever, right? Of course. Uh, Shout out to Prohibition. Very, very terrible idea. You know, you spend $1,000 on a bottle. Is that is that in the city? Is that normal I mean, nowadays? look, you're not spending $1,000 on every bottle. You're talking about premium bottles, of right? Course. Like, you premium know, we're, guys. We're premium guys. Premium guys, premium bottles. They go hand in hand, right? Yeah. Premium attracts premium. Premium women, premium men, premium bottles. 2022, 2023, yeah, have prices gone up? For sure, they've gone up slightly, but, uh, but you know, people are always trying to differentiate themselves. More wealth has been created during COVID than any other time in the world, right? Facts. So, so there is more money going around. 
uh, bottle service prices. Our costs have gone up. Minimum wage has gone up. So everything has gone up. Um, but have you as an owner seen a, a change in the trend, the trajectory? Like, are you seeing less customers? Well, look, because... there was a way, there was a period in time during COVID where you could only get in. And this was kind of our workaround in clubs is we had to create this restaurant style seating, six people. So, and because there was only an X amount of tables, the demand was high and the supply was low. So that naturally simple economics raised prices, right? So, and eventually, I mean, there was no reason to go back. People became used to spending it. To it. And not, and realistically, more money it was as an owner, created, yeah. right? Yeah, no, yeah. no, more money was created. It was yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you know, sure. whether it be crypto or this and that, trading cards, you know, whatever the case may be, collectibles, memorabilia, people just started making money you know, different ways. Real estate, real estate, obviously a big boom. So there was just more wealth created, and obviously just the number of people we have. I mean, Toronto is not really a still a as much of a tourist destination as some other places, obviously in in the U.S. But you know, we we get our fair share. I mean, the weather has a lot to do with it. The weather fucking sucks, but some snow you know, it is what it is. Uh, ruined our our nights. Um, COVID, COVID helped or hurt. It hurt in many ways, right? It's caused all pricing to go out of berserk increase, right? Like all of our costs. And it's just an excuse. Everyone always go, supply chain issue or, you know, we can't get this. We can't get there this There was a production. time when we couldn't get 42. You yeah, you couldn't get anything. Couldn't get it. Yeah, you know, so so it definitely drove up prices. It drove up minimum wage. It, you know, labor costs went up. Um so it didn't help in that sense, but it allowed us to clean things up a little bit, uh, regroup, reset. But I mean, I wouldn't say it helped because it it put and a lot, pushed a lot of people outside of the industry and the hospitality in general. There was yeah, a time was... where it was very difficult to find staff, particularly in restaurants, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people in hospitality, after seeing at home for so long, they said, fuck it, I'm going to go do something else. Get into uh, construction, you know, other 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 jobs, whatever the case may be. So it was very challenging to find uh, to find staff to come in and uh, pick up shifts. Now it's gotten a lot easier. Of course, uh, of course, thank God. So it's starting to correct itself again. But yeah, definitely that part of it was was a big challenge. And it, and you feel responsible, right? Like between all of my restaurants, club, bars, whatever you want to call it, we had you know hundreds of people, and you feel this responsibility to them, like your children, that all of a sudden you're putting them out of work. Um, not for anything that you wanted to do. We wanted to stay open and it was foolish. Red was, tape, red tape. You know, it was foolish that it was especially foolish for me when they closed restaurants and they pushed people at home because if they were so concerned, and I'm talking about, you know, the government, if they were so concerned about people spreading the disease, you know, it was smarter for them to keep the restaurants open because then they they could use the restaurants to police masks, to police social distancing. But what they ended up doing was pushing everyone at home. And everyone had house parties. Everyone yeah. had out. And no one wore masks. And no one did social distancing. So if you're so concerned about it, it was the wrong way to go about it. You're better off doing it in a controlled environment than doing it in an uncontrolled environment. So you've been in the business for many years, owned establishments, been to a lot of establishments. The single craziest thing you've ever experienced. Craziest thing you've ever experienced. I mean, this. we've experienced so much, right? Like we've experienced for whether it be celebrities obviously you know we've had them all the raptors championship mls champ tfc championship you know we've done hosted all their parties every celebrity you can imagine um every athlete and that's what people you know they people get excitement out of that Do right you get starstruck not really not really no i mean after a while right like it's they should be getting starstruck <laughs> <laughs> listen i i not for nothing i'm not saying i'm anybody special but I don't get starstruck. And I've had a kind of uh, entanglements. Shout out Jada Pinkett. I've had entanglements. With Jada? Not with Jada. Shout out Will. I love you. I love you. You're going to see this one day. But, like, I've had some situations where these people feel like, I I'm, I do a lot of social media. I'm always on my phone. And I've had situations where I'll be, like, co recording and people think I'm recording them. The celebrities, the hockey players, the basketball, whatever. I'd be like, I'm just here with my friends. I'm here. I'm here. I try to have a good time, right? Yeah, I mean, but you got to understand where they're coming from. They of get course. it so often, right? So, yeah. and that's the thing. A, you can't be like that around them. So to build that, you know, to to remove that barrier, to feel comfortable around, right? And that's what keeps them coming back. That's how we host so many people at right. our places, is right. because 
we don't give them that feel. They don't feel like they're, uh, you know, and yeah. you kind of protect them. A lot of secrets. We keep those inside, obviously. Um, and that's it. I mean, that you, you just got to make them feel comfortable because there's a lot of other people that won't. Yeah. That's and fact. Simple, simple as so, that. But yeah, in terms of craziness, I mean, damn, there's, you know, there's so many nights, but. You know, I, we've done stupid shit. Like, you're <laughs> getting, we've had crazy nights together. You know, yeah. we were dancing at 6 a.m. with dump trucks in New York. We went there for the, to... what was it, for TFC game, baseball game. We saw, we saw New York and Toronto, I think. And we went yeah. out with TFC, actually, yeah, yeah. the uh, One Oak. Yeah. We're trying and to figure out who was, who was the famous guys there. The because... Knicks were there. Yeah, everyone was there. One Oak, uh, New York, yes, yes. So, at the end of every year, I try to get my status with Air Canada. Star Alliance Gold, their Canada Super Elite. That's whatever. why you travel so much. It's a little bit. That has a little bit to do with it. So one year I call my buddy John. I'm like, John, it's December. I need to get a few more points. I did the math. All we gotta do is fly to Miami for a night and come back. He's like, okay, let me see. Let me talk to my girl. Blah, blah, blah. All right, whatever. Let's do it. So we connect in Charlotte. We get to to Miami. We land, rent a car, drive downtown. We don't even have. We drive to South Beach. We don't have a hotel at this point. So we're like, all right, what are we gonna do? We get there. Find the Gansevoort, which is now the one hotel. At the okay. time, it was like the happening spot, right? So we go in, work a deal, get a nice big suite, drop our stuff off, watch a little bit of football. I remember because I was watching Kurt Warner. He fucked me on fantasy. I needed him to get like two points, and he got injured. He got like three interceptions. He was like negative points. Big we quarterback, fantasy guy. Big quarterback fantasy. never happens. So <laughs> so you could just imagine, right? Like, so you were fuck, angry. I was fucking pissed, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, such is life. We move on. We um, So we said, let's go out. Call my buddy Patrick. He was running the door at uh, You got a guy in every city and every and every place. You always so. gotta have a guy. You always have a guy. So he set us up at uh, Set Night Club, which is now Mr. Jones. Um go into go in there. One thing leads to another. Oh, first we go to dinner, Mr. Chow. We're at night. Mr. At the, Chow, we at, love the, you. at the W. See uh, Alvin Williams, a few of the Raptors guys Raptor, that we knew yeah. saying what's up, what's up. The Raptors were playing Miami. Go to the club. Was that uh, planned or no? That was just unplanned. Coincidence. Just so happened that that was the weekend that we could go before Gotta Christmas, get the before New Year's. Got to get the points. You know, that's like a very unique week. So we go, um, we go to set, we get a table, hooks us up. And one bottle leads, just two of us. One bottle leads to two bottles, leads to three bottles, guys. leads to four bottles. The Raptors come, and it was like all the white guys hanging out together. So it was like all the rebounders. It was like <laughs> Rasho and the Sterovich. <laughs> Holy fuck. You're not old, man. <laughs> Hito Turkoglu. Hito. So Hito had good years. I think it was like Calderon. Wow. Okay. So like they're yeah. in the table, be literally beside us. So we're hanging out the whole night. So we're drinking. We went through a ton of bottles, just two of us. We're like, all right, we go. Then we go to some other place, keep drinking a little bit more, get back to the room. I don't know what happened. I vaguely remember. <laughs> I remember waking up. And I look. You blacked in. Black. I, I I tagged back in. <laughs> I'm in. Um, I'm looking around. And I'm like. I mean, we have a big suite, and you know, you're you're a man of suites in Las Vegas. Big suite guy. And uh, there's a the couch is missing, and I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> but the but the but the match like the cushions are there, so I'm like, all right, that's interesting. But it's like a sectional, right? So there's two pieces, but the one's missing, and the and the bar stool's missing, and I'm like, I mean, I'm trying to like put, put it, it all, all together, together yeah. broken pot, this that. I'm sleeping on the floor, by the way, and using one of the the cushions as a pillow. My buddy's sleeping in the bedroom, separate room. I, I open the door. I'm like, John, wake up. What the fuck? I look out the window, and there's like this vestibule thing that, you know, the cars, the valet cars go okay. under. Yeah. And on top of that, there's like this ductwork for the HVAC. And I see there's a guy actually sweeping in there, and the ductwork is de demolished, and the couch is <laughs> on the side of the it. The sweet couch. Was... The sweet couch <laughs> was there. And I look, and there's massive palm trees on Collins in Miami, <laughs> and the... And the stool is in the tree. Uh, <laughs> what did you miss? Huh? What did you miss when sleeping? I don't know. I, I didn't miss. I was involved. You were involved. I was involved. Blacked so out. So it turns out I, we were joking around. I whipped the pot at him so he thought it would be funny to throw the couch out the window. <laughs> Anyways, hold I'm like, wake second. up. we got to get the fuck hold out of here. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy yeah, yeah, story. Cr okay. Couch Some up. could say unbelievable, but still crazy. <laughs> we believe you. Okay? We believe you. Uh, I'm not one to lie. You know that everything comes not out of my mouth. No, not a liar. No, definitely not. No, not even an embellisher, really. Now we're looking out the window, and the janitor is there with security, and they have microphones, and they're looking up, and we're looking down, and we're like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, this is going to be expensive. So 
pack your bags, pack your bags, blah, blah, blah. What do we do with mattress? Uh, sort of with the cushions, hide it under the mattress, throw it in the closet, whatever. Door knocks, security. Where's your couch? I don't know. There's no couch here. Well, we got it. <laughs> uh, swear to God, we get a, he, they get a radio call. Come to the fifth floor. There's no couch there. They run. As soon as they run, I call valet. Get the car ready. <laughs> Fucking, all we had was a carry on. We were there for one night. Run to the car, get in, get in the car, call Amex. Uh, lost my credit card. I don't know. There's a charge here. Credit card. Huh? No, no idea. It wasn't me. Sorry. I have no idea. Okay. Cancel the card. We got away with it. They tried calling me. They tried Insane. Amex. Like some company keeps trying to charge your card ten thousand dollars. I'm like, decline. I don't know. It's not me. Yeah, no idea. Limit, no idea what happened. So, anyways, Couch. we got away with the same guy. Another trip in Miami, actually. At, at now at the Satai, which is also like a uh, a fancy place. We we booked two rooms for it was Oleg's birthday party, across from each other. Nice. I mean, again, some. Drunken night, sleeping on the floor, using the shirt as a pillow, blah, blah, blah. But the night before, we were, somehow we got into the kitchen and we were playing, you know what, the CNE, there's those, uh, there's those cups and you got to knock them all down. For some reason, we thought it was a good idea. There was glassware to use the de decorative oranges as balls to try to knock those down. In the suite. Where? No, this is in the restaurant in, in the, the hotel. In the restaurant in the hotel. But at 4 a.m., when the restaurant's closed, somehow we got into it because we were hungry. We needed to eat, right? It's a fair, it's a fair, it's fair. Anyways. Long story short, we destroyed the place, got sandwiches on the way out. Security's like, <laughs> we stumble out and security's like, what are you doing? We're like, oh, we don't know. <laughs> Late night menu. Got away with it again. This guy has a wow. horseshoe up his ass, him and I. Very good luck. Very good luck. You're a big horseshoe up his ass guy. You have a lot we of good luck. A lot luck. of horseshoes. Lot, yeah. Good luck, you know. Yeah. Positivity breeds positivity. <laughs> positivity breeds. You know, we're lucky. At the wedding, my brother didn't die when he fell off. Uh, Your into brother, the tree. who we love, who was supposed to join us tonight, had to had to do to some other business, tend to some other business. But um, I'll never forget that was one of the best videos, maybe of all time. Yeah, crazy video, crazy wedding. At I mean, your wedding, that was in Bahamas. Honestly, the best time. I, you know, best. What an you experience! Got married right, to the love of your life, of course. I'm married to my love of my life. Yeah. That was a yeah. Um, but it was just, you know, having all my friends there. We had like 150 people at a destination so, wedding. That video, which we're going to try to edit into this this pod, it was you absolutely gone. With my dad, absolutely gone. With your dad. Uh, Travis was there or no? Travis, Travis was there. Travis, I think, tried to save Alec. Yeah. Alec, for some reason. Gets up. Thought it was a good idea. Thought, uh, so imagine dancing up on one of these. Yeah. But. 10 foot down on the other side. Behind you got shrubs, like yeah. shrubs. And palm trees. And, and palm trees and everything. And thought it was a good idea to, I maybe mean, he was I, looking for something. I it, Perhaps. But anyways, he fell into it. And he just, from our perspective, he just- like, Disappeared. Disappeared. Like, he was like Homer did. Simpson. <laughs> yeah. like Into <laughs> the bushes. Shut that meme. He, was, he, he just disappeared. Alec disappeared. Alec disappeared. <laughs> and then he reappeared. He reappeared. Like nothing <laughs> happened. So he fell over, but my dad and I had no clue what oh, happened. Oh, fuck. Your dad, didn't notice there's it. one guy that could drink, that your dad, yeah, and he's, yeah. he's 80 pounds soaking wet, but God bless Tony. And yeah, strong liver. Wedding, yeah, strong liver. A lot of good speeches at that wedding. Body, I mean, you gave a nice impromptu one. Yeah, I tried. A inside, that was good. That I'm was, trying I mean, to. My speech wasn't planned, apparently, nor was yours. No, I mean, <laughs> all off the cuff. John Jay told me, shout out John Jay, great DJ, just told me, he's like, play whatever you want, and then do whatever you want. So I just grabbed the mic, and I started talking, and uh so yeah. yeah very deep very deep i mean again one that i don't remember but my wife remembers yeah there's, there's got to be a Claire video somewhere that, or something so, yeah. yeah there is a video um, of that <laughs> it's it's uh locked up basically to, we to, don't explain, to, really into to explain to our viewers a lot of good times together a, good time. a lot of great times uh let's bring it back to toronto your favorite night i i want you to i want you to say what i want you to say but efs there was a night your birthday and Jamil's birthday. That was a great night. Shout out Jimmy. We love you. Podcast that was a great night. Great soon. night. That paid for my shoes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we all, we, we support. We're family. We support. We, we support. support. We support. I support back. Of I course. I support back. You're I support here. back. You're here. You're here. And you've, you you've know, always supported. Yeah. But um, but that was a great night. I mean, we I had the 25. money guns. We had the signs. We had, you we know. We had wristbands, which had you wrist don't get really Yeah, yeah we had the know. whole area, you know, security. We had a bit too many people. Midgets. We had... Giants, we, we call had them everything. little people. I think well, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, we don't want to be politically correct, but yeah, um, some of my best times in my life have been at your were midgets. There were midgets. <laughs> I mean, they were there. <laughs> little people, I guess, is what we call them. Um, 
but yeah, but some of the best times are like EFS was, was, we had a lot of good times. That's arguably where kind of I made my persona. 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 Profit. I, a profit. I thought that was making other people money. Left shout profit, out, play on words. Shout out TST. Shout out TST. Shout out Sports Raiders. Make a lot of money Is for that everybody. Sponsor? Uh, always sponsor. Official always. sponsor. Yeah, none of this would happen without that. That's that's number one. Business number one. We've been lucky. They've all been very successful. That you know, EFS obviously being on King Street was always busy, easily accessible. But like you know, Thinking I don't know if we've had. I mean, we've had some shitty ones, but you know what? We've I've been very fortunate that you know, I have great partners in all our ventures, and all our ventures have always been relatively successful. You know. Some takes a little bit more work than others, but you know, you know, they're very, very lucky. And it, and it's not just a one man show. It's so many people that are yeah. involved, and everyone has some sort of contribution to it. And so there's always like this mix. It's like you know, making a soup, right? Like yeah. you have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and it all comes together at the end of the day. So uh, nightclubs, restaurants. Like I love restaurants. It's always been a passion for me. I mean, I you know how I feel about ordering food. Uh, you know, like going out to restaurants. Uh, so there's definitely like a passion to it. I do excel, obviously, at you know hospitality, hosting, you know, nightlife, nightclubs. Nightclubs are more profitable, obviously, um, or maybe not obviously, but they are. Restaurants suck in terms of making money. Everyone Margins, thinks you're making yeah. a ton of money, but it's nothing, right? But they're 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 also fun, right? Like if you enjoy it, there's there's a there's a fun factor to it, and not everything is about making money. So, I mean, if we can talk about what's coming, I don't want you to get into specifics because I don't want you to, you know, whatever, give out any of your secrets. But if you could open a new place, if you are opening a new, we place. we are we are we're opening a new place. Um, it's kind of like a supper club, bar, restaurant thing. Don't really want to get into too much of it, but. Uh, that's a big one that we've invested a ton of money into that. That'll be hopefully opening in August. And I had another place at King in Portland I was partnered in called Shook. It was awesome. It was like it was great. A, I had a couple of dinners uh, there. Great. But it was a vegetarian focused restaurant. And again, without, al I mean, naturally vegetarians and alcohol, they don't, don't really mix. go well. And you need the alcohol component to make more money. So it wasn't really yielding the return that we wanted. So we decided it was a smart idea. It was still great. I mean, honestly, some of the greatest food came out of that place. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're motivated by financial con you know, compensation. And, and if it wasn't making enough money, it was time to uh, turn the chapter. And we've come up with a banging concept that's going there. Uh, King and Portland, you can't beat that location. It's going to be like a... Uh, where Shook was? Where Shook was, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be like a high-end supper club. Uh, supper club. Not that turns into a party, per se, but a vibey restaurant, if you want to call it that. Somewhere that you would go hang out, and you could stay late if you wanted to, or you can use it as a stepping stone to go to the next place. But you still have that option to stay. Um, steak, seafood, uh, towers. like I mean, look, there's other places like that on King Street, but, I mean, this is with edible food. Who do you get? Yeah, this is the uncut version. Who the fuck do you hate on? No, no, I don't hate anyone. No. I don't hate anyone. Who 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 rat, rattles your tail? Who? No, I get along with everyone, and that, you yeah. know, I try to help everyone, send business all the time to yeah. to. I mean, I don't treat anyone as a competitor. Um, I treat it like we're a small family, and we need to support each other, you know. And if others don't don't look at it the same way, so be it. I know that I'm. That's the way I am. Because especially look, now summertime's here. We have a lot of footballers that come from from uh, overseas. Um, NFL off season, we get a lot of players that that visit Toronto, and I want to share. You know, I want them to experience. So my friends say, "Hey, how come you not only bring them to your places?" Well, you know, sometimes my places aren't geared towards where they need to go, and I want to. I want those people to have a good time so they can go and promote our venues, myself, Toronto. To their friends as a city yep. and, and and bring more people in town right so it's not oh you can't always think about it as self-serving mentality you got to look at it from a you know a long term yeah yep. i think you do that very well sack i think you do that very well and you've always hosted me and our friends and our group as you know better than not that i'm preparing Can myself we do to your last birthday year last year 
we we stopped here. I don't know if we we started here or whatever ended here, but you went there. We stopped. I mean, it. I don't know where you ended, but I mean, there was it. a there was a portion of the night that was here. At some point of the night, we we ended up we were yeah. here, and we always see having a great time. We always do. You're a great person. You're a great man, and uh, that obviously leads into your success as a hospitality owner, as a club owner, as a restaurant owner. I think we have some. Is it here yet? We have. Uh, we got some pizzas here from uh, Good Son. Yeah, so let's give it a shot. Good. We got. I don't know what we have here. Let's see. We had them send up a couple pizzas. They sent let's us some see what stuff. We got. To, let's uh, see what we got. Yeah, we. Uh, I think good napkins son. were good. The black napkins. They look <laughs> nicer on Jamil, camera. Napkins are ten yeah. out of ten. Yeah, we That's... got a lot of napkins for Jamil. <laughs> that is for sure. Let's open this up. We have a here. Give me that one. Put it over here. So we have a halal option for. Uh, for Maj, shout out Ramadan. You got to have one. You got to have one. We're going to eat. You got to rate it. You got to rate it like Portnoy. I mean, listen, uh, Jamal, shout out Jamal at Good Son. Get this here. Uh, made me an espresso martini. It doesn't look, doesn't look the best right now, but. It's been sitting for a bit. It's been sitting for a bit. I, I gave Sako my honest he gave review. Me, he gave me an honest to the face review. I don't lie. You don't lie. You don't lie. You don't lie. Uh, eight point six, good son. That's not some mark. A good rate. For everyone that falls, is that the, have you given a higher rating before? You can say it. I'm not offended. No, I ha I have. Who uh, was it? Where one, was it? We one, need to know. You gotta one, tell your tell your viewers. One Yorkville has a great special martini. The bartender, she was. That I, had something to do with it. That changed she, the rating. She asked me for a rating on the spot, so I had to give her a nine point two, out of respect. But if she wasn't there, I mean, uh, eight point four, eight point five. But I'm, I like to please people. Okay, if I wasn't there, it wouldn't have been eight point six. No, no, eight point six. Honestly, it's a solid eight point six. I told you when this place sucked and that place that night. I told you I'm not a liar. So, so you gotta Jamal, try. You gotta try Clarita's next. But Jamal, shout, shout out. Shout out Clarita. I'm coming to the house. I'm gonna babysit the kids and try your Last time you babysit a cruise, he almost drowned in the pool at Abu Salah's house. Let's not bring that story up in front of He the almost drowned. Of Chris, watch my son. I turn around, turn back. My son is floating for his life. But. We did have a, we had a little bit of uh, retribution. We did have retribution. Cruz did come back in the pool. He did, he did. And we, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a you know, brave kid. Should have yeah. seen him at Disneyland or at Universal. <laughs> going on all the rides. I was so surprised. You know, he's five years old. He wanted to go on every single roller coaster. I was like, damn, all right. He's him. Cruz is him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the same definitely. Coming. When I stop being him. Cruz Yellow will, belt, two stripes. Cruz will become him eventually, hopefully. Um, uh, great, great talk. Great episode. Uh, let's eat this food. Let's drink these drinks. Uh, Ultraviolet hosting us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, amazing time. Um, sh well, we might go to go into a party tonight. I don't know. We might open might, it. Uh, anything is possible. The world is your oyster, my the friend. The world is your oyster. Maybe a Dutchie <laughs> night one night it where could. we just it get a bunch be. of straight... It could be tonight. Could it be tonight? Tonight, we, can we if we can open, I let's mean, do it. let's just Call do it. it. You, all you got to do Post this, we'll have a lineup. Let's well, go. Well, yeah, I know, I know. Love you, <laughs> love you. You're a brother more than anything else. Uh, nap me up there. Jamal, thank you for the special word. 8.6 for everyone wondering. At Good Son. You got to get a pizza rating before before you get off. Pizza rating, pizza rating. Pork, pork. Shout out Guys, Ramadan. I love you. 30 for 30. I'm Catholic, you know what happens. 30 for 30. Magic's going 30 for 30 this year. This is a live rating. This is a live rating. This is first live. time ever. First time pizza rating. First time pizza rating on the podcast. I feel like four ones. <laughs> we don't want to burn your mouth. I feel like four. No, war. Good. Maj, I love you. How's the bork? I eat everything. I'm I'm heavy. You can see. We sure can. <laughs> <laughs> this was cooked well oven oven wood burning oven at wood burning oven some? two locations one location two locations this, uh, this da downstairs and Don Mills Don Mills uh, I'm not a savant at, po at pizza but Portnoy don't hate me I love you Barstool I'm a stoolie this is a uh, this is a uh, I'm the... confident I'm confident I'm waiting no, I'm waiting high. Man, and, and Goodson has all the ratings this dough that thing beats this dough delicious dough uh, fluffy, light, but, but then, but, but then, but hits the spot. I'm going to go with 9.1. Boom. 9.1. Portnoy, I need you to come to the good son and rate this pizza as well. 9.1. This is an unbelievable slice. Unbelievable pie. You're an unbelievable person. 
I love you. Thank you for supporting. We need, we need, we need more shout outs. Lickle Moors, Miss Lickle Moors. Tell the people what you own and where to you go. You tell them. You've been to all of them. I mean, that's the only one left. You didn't give me I was there for the, for, the home open, for the home opener of, at Lickle Moors. I got a bill for zero. I'm a family and friend. <laughs> and that might not happen to you, but Lickle Moors was, I don't eat Caribbean food, but unbelievable Caribbean food. Uh, we have Ultraviolet. We have Good Sun. We have Lickle Moors. We have. The good son. The good son. And we then have, we have the two new places. We have a lot of places that have now closed because that's the industry, but a lot of places that are coming too. So God bless you in those places. I hope you have unlimited success and I'll be there to support. This pizza is amazing. This establishment is amazing. I've had a lot of great times here, birthdays and celebrations. And you may always make it feel like a celebrity. Whether I am or I am not is up for the viewers to, to decide. I feel like I kind of am. I but mean, they may not. They may not. I'm a normal person at the end of the day. So I love you. Thank you. Continued success always. And uh, another episode of Zibad. Zibad. Thank you to our uh, everyone producers and everybody. This was kind of on the cuff. You gotta give shoutouts. Terry, everyone knows Terry. Terry's a legend. Maddie, I love you guys. You guys make it all happen. Uh, Ultraviolet, come here. Come here. Spend your money. Party. <laughs> Have a good time. Sack, I love you. Love you. You're the best.